Dawlish is a beautiful seaside town on the South Devon coast in the UK. Popular tourist spot for holidaymakers and visitors. It's famous for mainly two things, the black swans on Dawlish water but most notably Brunel's iconic coastal railway line. This footage was shot in late January 2014, just before the storm. I made this recording to document where I wanted the first camera for Dawlish beach cams. Dawlish had faced a number of severe storms that began in autumn 2013. February the 3rd saw yet another one approach, but nobody realised what was about to happen. This driver has stopped at the exact location where the breach occurred hours later. As a matter of precaution during these conditions, Network Rail have a lookout travelling the cab with the driver. They assess the conditions and look out for debris obstructing the tracks. If you look closely, you will see that some of the ballast has washed over both tracks causing an obstruction. Under the viaduct next to the railway station the waves were already reaching the road and it wasn't long until the authorities cordoned off the seafront. In Timmouth the scenes were similar, huge waves hitting the wall causing flooding to the promenade and roads. Timmouth Pier suffered severe damage during the storm, with the floor being washed out in sections. Many of its old favourites were lost and access to the decked area is now restricted as a consequence. Back in Dawlish, this was the last train allowed through for what was going to be around two months. Around 8.30 in the evening, reports were coming in of the severity of the storm. Reports from Exeter Road some 60 feet above Riviera Terrace and the railway were that seaweed was hitting their windows. Down on Seelawn Terrace and Riviera Terrace, however, the reports were of a more frightening collapse occurring. At around 9pm, the seawall had already started to get washed away, and by 9.30 a large section had disappeared into the sea. This was when the residents started to call 999 and at 10.45, people were given five minutes to evacuate their homes. On the morning of the 5th of February, the world woke up to the news and unforgettable images of the railway line hanging over the breach seawall that had stood there since the 1840s. The breach was the worst in the history of the seawall and even Brunel himself couldn't have imagined how severe the storm damage would have been. Dawlish railway station suffered too as a lot of platform one ended up being taken by the storm. Marine parade was flooded and huge sections of the railings had collapsed onto the road. Also the beach huts around Corriton Code were irreparably damaged by the ferocious waves.
To find the answer, we need to go all the way back to the building of Brunel's Coastal Railway. At this stage, coastal properties used to have direct access to the beach. For a railway to be built, permission and compensation had to be agreed with the landowners and one in particular, Mr Powell of Seelawn House, proved to be a hard case to solve. Having moved to Dawlish from the Midlands to escape the Industrial Revolution, he was not keen on having a railway pass him within feet of his house. At this point, of course, it was due to be an atmospheric railway and much quieter than the steam locomotives that were yet to come. To secure his agreement, he insisted that the seaside footpath along the wall would not give the public a view into his private home. It was agreed that for this 200 yard section that the 8 foot wide public path would drop to a lower level and leave an 18 inch thick wall to support the railway. It was the only part of the wall to have this much weaker defence in place and it is why this particular stretch was always vulnerable. The fact that it lasted 175 years pays testament to the quality of the original build. It is ironic however that Mr Powell passed away before the railway was completed and so was never disturbed by any aspect of it passing his home. In later years, Seelawn House actually became Dordish Railway Station for a short period after a storm before being demolished. This footage was the first ever recording from our San Remo camp a week or so after the storm. For over six weeks the locally named Orange Army worked 24 hours a day to get the line up and running. Once the main line was reinstated in April 2014, the rest of the securing work could begin. Our Prime Minister at the time, David Cameron, was one of the first visitors to use the repaired railway. The Sea Riser 4 is an offshore working platform with a huge crane on board. It was prepared in Tynmouth and arrived on the scene in Dawlish looking like it was about to drill for oil. The Sea Riser took delivery of the L sections. The L sections, formed of reinforced concrete, were being shipped from Tynmouth. Later, sections were brought in by rail from Dawlish Warren. Once the sections were in place, the void was filled with yet more concrete to form a solid wall to protect against future storms. This is now regarded as the strongest part of the entire stretch from Dawlish Warren to Tynmouth. To move the sea riser required the legs to be lifted and a couple of tugs to manoeuvre it into place. Once in place they would lower the legs to the seabed floor and work could begin again. Once the sea riser had finished its work it was left in the bay ready for collection and then towed back to Tynmouth. The first steam train through on the newly repaired seawall was the Cathedral's Express hauled by Sir Nigel Gresley on the 10th of April 2014.
It was another year until the Seawall footpath opened on the 14th of August and the Orange Army prepared a special announcement using our only camera at the time to broadcast their message in the rain to the public. Moments after that, the press and public were allowed to walk from Dawlish to Dawlish Warren for the first time in over 18 months. Since completion of the works in 2015, we have had a few more storms, but none of the scale of 2014. Line closures due to weather have been extremely rare with three occurring during 2018, including the first ever predetermined closure in November by Network Rail. In the five years we have had flooding in the station and railings washed across the line at Kennaway Tunnel, but very little damage overall. Debate still rages about the best solution to the South West Rail route, with the new IET trains now in service and work on the breakwaters and the recent news for Kings Walk all ongoing, we await the big announcement of plans for the most vulnerable section between Holcombe and Timmouth. Thank you for watching. If you like what we do, please share this video for others. To support us, please visit dawlishbeach.com and click support and subscribe.